Boys tonight to sign what some call the first major civil rights legislation of the 21st century. It will prohibit employers and insurance companies from discriminating against people based on their DNA. As scientists unravel the mysteries of our genetics, businesses are now offering specialized DNA services to people, hoping to discover all kinds of things about themselves. KTU's Renee Kemp has tonight's special report. Scientists are now able to deconstruct the building blocks of human life, and private industry is using it in unexpected ways. The most important side of DNA, and the reason we're putting billions of dollars into research on it, is for health. But there are new ramifications as companies seek patents on individual human genes and find profitable uses for DNA. We're really concerned that the marketing of these technologies is getting way ahead of the science way ahead of people's understanding of what's going on. In many ways, the public has seen only a hint of what DNA profiling can mean. It's helped determine why some people can roll their tongues, why some can arch their eyebrows, and others can't. DNA sequencing can even determine paternity. But now, even that process is as close as your drugstore shelf. Sorensen Genomics offers this $20 do-it-yourself paternity test. Submit a cheek swab with a lab fee, and in two weeks, the company claims you can determine who's the daddy. More importantly, DNA can determine if you're at risk for certain diseases. The great thing about what we're offering is that we know a little bit now, but we're going to know a lot more going forward. And so what we feel this really gives people an opportunity to do is learn about genetics in a, in a new and interesting way. 23andMe, which refers to the 23 pairs of chromosomes on the human DNA ladder, is a Mountain View-based startup company. It conducts so-called spit parties, where saliva samples are collected. And for $1,000, participants get a copy of their DNA sequence. And some people worry that the new DNA technologies are moving so quickly that they are under-regulated and have the potential for abuse. 23andMe and five other companies are now being investigated by the California Department of Public Health because of consumer complaints about the price and accuracy of results. Other critics openly wonder how such companies are using those DNA results. They may be able to make actually most of their money on the products they can develop out of the data that they collect, and that actually people are paying them to give them their data. Critics looking at the burgeoning DNA industry cite privacy and potential discrimination as possible red flags. I certainly think we've got to be aware of how the information is being used. So as we generate that type of information, uh, certainly the privacy of the information is something people should be concerned about. And, and looking at how that information will be shared and interpreted. Applied Biosystems in Foster City is the first company to create a machine that makes DNA sequencing quick and affordable. What used to require a full year and about one million dollars now takes only a week and costs about one thousand. The company expects growing demand from individuals who want their own DNA profile. People such as Melvin Gillette, who has already spent thousands of dollars to trace her ancestry. I'm having a hard time finding records to, to trace back very far. So I decided to, after I started hearing about it, and I waited about a year, and then I decided to try that. Gillette is convinced her DNA test results trace her roots to the West African nation of Cameroon. But many genetic ethicists question how accurate DNA can be in genealogical research. They're not going to be able to tell you with any honesty, with any accuracy, that your mitochondrial DNA ancestor came from Ireland or Senegal or Japan. Greeley says for every good use of DNA, there's a potentially dangerous one. Attention deficit disorder, 89% probability. In the sci-fi movie Gattaca, people's lives and livelihoods are predetermined at birth based on their DNA profile. Most experts say the science fiction scenario is pretty far-fetched, but it's a real enough possibility that last week the U.S. Congress passed GINA, the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act, to prevent employers from basing hiring decisions on genetic test results. The frontiers of DNA are wide open, and the best case scenario is that someday DNA will be used to create individual owner's manuals for every human being to help customize medicine, increase longevity, and improve quality of life. Renee Kemp, KTVU, Channel 2 News. So, what makes us different from one another?
Let's say you have frizzy curly hair and your siblings have shiny straight hair and you want to know who you got your frizz from. Or you have a history of diabetes in the family and you want to see how likely you are to get it too. Or say you're this guy and you want to know once and for all if you're related to this guy. Okay, let's go to American Idol. <laughs> then you may want to seek the help of 23andMe. It's a personal genetics information company founded by Linda Avey with the help of her partner, Anne Wojcicki. As a biopharmaceutical industry insider, Avey knew breakthroughs in the field had a broader appeal. Here's how it works. Order a kit, spit in it. Then 23andMe uses up-to-date technology to map your genetic code. The information they come back with can provide insight into why you are the way you are. Your siblings didn't necessarily get the same versions of your parents' genes that you did. Clients can find out their risk for common diseases and conditions, such as heart disease. They can also find out about the origin of, say, food preferences or athletic ability, even get details about their ancestry. As for the Buffets... Only time will tell. Where did that idea for the business model come from? Say, okay, we want to work like like a Facebook, for instance, that connects people from the same school or the same uh, city, but do it from a genetic standpoint. I mean, where did, where did that come from? Well, it really came from um, the roles I was having in um, the companies I worked for, where I was going out and talking to researchers. And the difficulty with doing genetics research, it's not so much the tools and the technologies. We have those. It's really very difficult to assemble large cohorts of people who have a particular trait or disease. It's really hard to get access to them, to reach out to them, hard to pull information out of them. And it seemed like we've got all these social networking tools, why not apply this to genetics research? So it was really that idea that we can build an online relationship with individuals and get specific bits of information. We can't collect everything. Of course, you can't self-report certain things about your health, but a lot of it you can because you know about yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's all about creating this, this web technology to uh, really go hand in hand with the genetics research and so it's really it was out of frustration that we were not making progress fast enough. Linda Avey co-founder of 23andMe you're watching Venture we'll be right back we're talking DNA. Our vision is that you know I don't know if I can give you a timeline but probably within Ten years, I, I believe all babies who are born are just going to be sequenced from day one. And that information will be part of their, their molecular profile. <laughs> and, you know, wherever you can do a genetic diagnostic, that will be done. And that, you know, the, those data will, will, you know, probably reside in their, me, their medical record. So it's, but it's just a matter of getting the tools to a cost point where that's feasible. Uh, you recognize that 40% of the disease burden, at least in the United States, is behavioral. The 30% is genetic. So you have the ability now to strategically intervene the 70% of the disease burden if you combine, you know, these these kinds of tools. Um, how how do you see? I mean, this is a, an amazing tool for um, public policy and for resource allocation for public health. I mean, if you can sequence a population, maybe not in the United States where you can't force anyone to have a genetic test, but in certain parts of the world where it's perhaps the government would mandate, would, would require um, testing, um, I, I, it would be a very elegant and efficient tool. And I think it'll be a lot easier, you know, for those countries that are in a position to mandate something like this, that the benefit is, is each person gets their information. It's not that they're taking it away from them, it's more like they're giving it to them. And that's a, that's a huge difference. And people, I think, will be much more open. And they won't feel like it's been pushed down on them, as opposed it'll be, um, they'll see it as an opportunity to learn more about themselves. And if that can benefit their country as well, it'll feel more like a partnership, I think, as opposed to, you know, a heavy regulatory hand coming down on them. So, so you're a good citizen and the government actually yeah. is helping you. Be exactly. A and you're able to contribute information to your country, you know, to help your whole population and the people who live around you. And, you know, if you've got similarities with other people in other countries as well, I think it'll even help blur some of the boundaries and some of the borders between, you know, people who might not agree with each other for other philosophical reasons, but now suddenly they're connecting at a completely <laughs> different level. And, 
it, you know, I hate to say that we could get rid of political strife in this world, but <laughs> <laughs> you never, I think we think pretty big uh, up here, so we're, you know, we're excited about how that might change mindsets and, and worldviews people have of who they, and you know, seeing how related they are to, to people that they might disagree with for religious reasons or other reasons, that this is a fundamental, fun, fundamental way to connect with other individuals. Time to talk to Bill Gates. Yeah. <laughs> yeah.